We are an inhumane society of people, desensitized to violence. Alan Orr's theory of adaptation demonstrates how organisms, especially humans, adapt to their environment. Through the lens of this theory, the fact that humanity has seen, felt, and lived through violent events emphasizes humanity's talent for accomplishing adaptation, accepting violence as a force forged in the world they inhabit. Yet, through the years, violence and its psychological impacts have adapted to fit many forms. Terrorism, animal cruelty, and video games, changing the attitudes of the American people. Good morning, my name is Anya Iforsky, Vanessa Folson, Allison Chestnut, Sadie Mackey, Karina Alzasa. As a disclaimer, some of the images in this presentation may be perceived as graphic. Within the scope of violence, the psychological thought processes of certain individuals help to examine their motives through brain functioning. The Surgeon General Scientific Advisory Committee of Television and Social Behavior conducted a study assessing the impact of violence on the attitudes of viewers discovering a correlation between media and an increasing desensitization of violence. This connection asserts the fact that children, when predisposed to violent images, can establish negative beliefs leading to aggressive behaviors at an early age. This will be elaborated on further by another team member. Psychological effects of a traumatic event can establish a social dynamic influence on victims of violent action. Explained in an interview with Professor Deborah Hollister, a psychologist from Parish Charles Hospital in Louisiana, attitudes toward a particular stimuli will depend on the representation of the stimuli and the perception of it in the individual's memory. Karina? This is where the, the impacts on Americans' attitudes caused by war and aggression comes to play. Terrorists have caused Americans to develop a deeper distrust in the world as one thing. And rather than stopping this numbing trend regarding violence, those attacks only help to reinforce it. The zombie trend in Americans' attitudes was clearly displayed when the, American, the, when the United States used various illegal and improper interrogation methods on terrorist suspects after 9-11. Ter interrogations that the U.S. personnel hoped would lead to one of the most wanted men by the United States, Osama bin Laden, the former leader of Al-Qaeda. However, it became a quest in which prisoners' well-being and human rights became disregarded. And as of late, bigger and bloodier incidents are being required to truly capture the American attention. And in small, but just serious attacks, such as school shootings, are becoming gradually disregarded. As you can observe this map provided by every town, a program safety organization. Since 2013, there has been at least 106 school shootings across America. And the majority of these school shootings never made headlines or even received the same light under news powerhouses, such as New York Times and Times Magazine which further demonstrates how Americans are lacking sensitivity. Allison? In addition to terrorism, social political shifts in American attitudes towards violence can be attributed to violence in video games. According to the American Psychological Association, or the APA, when viewers watch violent behavior, they will subliminally internalize the socially accepted behavior. This has negative effects on viewers' cognition, including a decreased concern for other suffering and less sensitivity also, in past years, the federal government has made many decisions regarding violence in video game industry. In 1993, public outcry in response to Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, two highly controversial violent video games, pushed Congress to consider the regulation of video games. This was one of the first times the government was involved in the video game industry. In 2005, California passed a law that required a label of 18 on violent video games and outlawed the sale of these video games to minors. However, in 2009, the law was nullified because it violated the First Amendment. According to Justice Scalia, a state does not possess the power or right to restrict the ideas to which children may be exposed. These are all examples of how political efforts to establish laws on regulation of video games have been repeatedly suppressed, ultimately silenced by the First Amendment. This contributes to more ignorant society because the issue has not surpassed presence in court. Vanessa? American attitudes towards violence have not only been altered in situations concerning other humans, but additionally with livestock and domesticated animals. Confined animal feeding operations, otherwise known as CAFOs, began to truly take hold in the 1970s and 80s when the need for food as a nation increased. Some of the most violent practices of CAFOs include confining pregnant sows to gestation crates for the length of their pregnancy, while additionally latching them to the ground, causing the animals to bite and chew at themselves in an attempt to escape. Heifers are artificially impregnated in order to keep them producing milk. 
Domesticated animals are also presenting themselves as the new face of American tolerance towards violent practices. Not only have animal abuse cases doubled within recent years, but there have been various psychological studies suggesting that households that present crimes of animal abuse are twice as likely to later present crimes of child abuse, domestic abuse, and even homicide. Through these two examples, we can see that as the U.S. has become more desensitized to violence, compassion towards animals has also decreased. The violent practices in CAFOs and domestic animal abuse show that American people are not the only ones impacted by shifting perspectives on violence, but additionally their animal counterparts. Sadie? It is suggested by media experts that the news industry does not lead to desensitization and ignorance because Americans influence what is broadcasted on television. This implies that Americans are well aware of what they are asking not to be shown. In separate interviews about the news industry, executive producer Angel Vlaspez and former assistant news director Michael Mackey explain how censorship is changing shaping attitudes in the United States. Mackey cites examples about the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995 and the attacks on 9-11. Following the Oklahoma City bombing, the public made it clear that they wanted to see footage of everything, like the image on the left. After 9-11, broadcasters continued to show this type of violent media, including images of the Twin Towers falling and footage of the wreckage, like the image on the left. This this Watching violent scenes repeatedly caused the public to beg news stations to stop showing this type of graphic media. Though news organizations originally covered violent events in gruesome detail, public complaints led the news organizations to cater their stories to the public opinion rather than including full detail, which exemplifies the ignorance harbored by the American public. Still, the assertion that Americans are sensitive to violence is easily disproven. Blasquez remarks that since the internet has expanded its reach, broadcasters have relied on the internet to publish the graphic videos and images that stations cannot show because of apathetic viewers. If there is more information to be shown, broadcasters generally direct their viewers to a website where they can find it. However, most people will not do the supplementary research, and without this research, people become ignorant to what is going on around them and unaware of the gravity of violence in their surroundings. Allison? Despite the negative outcomes of violence, there are potential solutions. The APA identifies a key program that works to prevent violence, called Adults and Children Act Against Violence. Act Against Violence seeks to help children from ages zero to eight by educating their teachers, guardians, and caretakers to be positive role models for them. Through Act Against Violence, children have hopeful opportunities to learn skills that help prevent violence, including anger management, effective discipline, solving problems verbally instead of, instead of violently, and being careful about the media they are exposed to. Although Act Against Violence may not be the permanent end because it only works to prevent instead of stop violence, it is a hopeful start for a more knowledgeable society. Vanessa? American tolerance towards violence is a phenomenon evident in both the social and political spheres, where time is continuing a shift towards a more desensitized culture. Without the presentation of alternative mediums of psychological assistance, media, and animal-human relations, the U.S. faces a potential pitfall towards permanent violence and lack of empathy. It is up to the public to take action against the sources advocating for the worst of this world and strive to make a return towards compassion and rapport once again. There is an opportunity for violence to take its proper place in the hierarchy of understanding, and the time to speak up against this misunderstanding is now. Thank you, and at this time we are more than happy to take any questions. All right, thank you guys. Again, we're going to ask questions. We're literally going to go right down the line from left to right, so you're up. Um, tell me something that surprised you in your research. It really surprised me how much, like how many school shootings happened since 2013, and we never. I, I mean, honestly, I heard about like three or two in the past three years. Uh, I saw that that data when you put it up. That is, I thought the same thing. Um, next up, Dave. Was there evidence that you gathered that you didn't use? Yes, I gathered information from the Federal Communications Commission, which regulates what is allowed to be shown on television, and. We used maybe one sentence in the paper, but we didn't use it in the presentation. And then we also gathered information from other people that we didn't include in the presentation as well. Why? Just curious. We, to make the time limit, we didn't, we didn't feel like we had enough space to include everything. Yeah. Allison, how are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs> uh, 
tell me, how'd your research question evolve as you went through the process from when you first came up with it to researching to writing the paper, group paper, presentation? What happened along the way? Originally, when we came together, we had a lot of really different topics we wanted to talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk about terrorism. Vanessa wanted to explore stuff about animal cruelty. And we all had really different perspectives. And then suddenly, we realized that this could all be put under one term, violence. And we wanted to see how do Americans see violence? How do they react to it? So we had a lot of different things that we talked about, such as media, psychological aspects, terrorism, news. And eventually, we came together and started writing our individual papers. Originally in our question we had a part that talked about economics and how how video games are increasingly becoming a bigger industry and getting more money every year. However, my lens was the only lens that had much to talk about it besides pathos. So we decided to take that out of our question and completely out of our paper. So definitely mature as you went along. Mm -hmm. and yeah. What advice would you give for people that do something, uh, research on this in the future? Definitely explore different lenses, especially ones that you are interested in doing, because if you're not interested, then why even talk to it to different people? It's supposed to reach out to different variety of groups. Um, we definitely explored a lot of research and checked the right re relativity, reliability <laughs> of the different sources to see if they were actually good and accurate and to um, directly support our arguments. So, and be confident when you're up on presentation, and that's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Vanessa, tell me, like how level, how, tell me the level of certainty you are about the conclusion, since you talked about the conclusion. Tell me how certain you are about your recommendation. Well, with programs like Act Against Violence in place, we feel that there is a potential for violence to come down and become more of a sensitive and well spoken about topic in the United States, but at the current time, unless people begin to take an issue like this and look at it from a different perspective and with new eyes instead of the old ones, we think that our conclusion is pretty solid in the fact that the United States has become really desensitized towards violence and it's just a factor of the world that we live in right now. Cool. Thank you very, very much. Let's drop that number.